Hey everybody, Doug here from BH, and today we're looking at the brand new 2019 Mac Pro. This is the first major redesign, and so that means you have a whole new slew of CPU options, GPU options, RAM, and of course input output. But the big news with the new Mac Pro is how modular and customizable it is. It's almost like building your own computer, which is kind of crazy for a Mac. So we're gonna take a look inside the new Mac Pro, outside, and see what the benefits are and who benefits from it. So the first time you take a look inside the new Mac Pro, you'll see a few things. It's a very clean layout. Now, we have a lot going on here because we've added a few things, which we'll get to in a minute. But the number one thing are these black boxes. Now, these are called MPX modules. They're basically all-in-one modules that can easily slot in and out of the Mac Pro without having to deal with any wires or cabling. They're all built around the PCIe standard, so they're powered straight off the board. As of now, you have graphics and storage options, and that includes both Apple first-party stuff and also third-party devices. So what have we thrown in here? Well, first up, this very slim one is called Apple's Afterburner card. Now, this is a hardware decoder for ProRes. If you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user, this will be great for you. You'll have dramatically reduced decode times on ProRes footage. Unfortunately, we don't use it here, so we can't test it today, but this is what it looks like. Going up a little bit, you'll see we have a Blackmagic Decklink Mini Monitor. Now, this is something I always wanted to add to the 2013 models, but you simply can't do that. This is something that normally you'd have to either add to a PC or you'd have to use another solution like the Ultra Studio series or even further and more recently you'd have to use an eGPU solution to use the card externally. So from my experience you can never have enough USB slots. So just because we could, we added a card that has two additional USB-C slots. Now going down a bit you'll see that we have this very large MPX module. This is a third party option. This is from Promise Technology. It's their Pegasus R4i four bay RAID solution. Now this particular version is a 32 terabyte RAID setup. We have it set up as RAID zero, so it's only 32 terabytes, but of course you can set this up any way you please. This connects without wires, so it is still PCIe based, and it just slots right in. Again, just because we could, we also put in a smaller two bay RAID solution, again from Promise Technology, this is their Pegasus J2i. Now this particular version is smaller, you'll see it fits up above. This is not an MPX module like the others. This connects to a SATA connection on the board, which takes me to the wider view of this system. So if you step back for a minute, you'll see that the motherboard is designed very cleanly. There's exposed power and SATA connections, so the drives that we have up top can connect right there. And if you do decide to put in a graphics card that's not in an MPX module, you would also use these connections. Now probably the coolest thing about this whole MPX setup is that it's all controlled by one locking mechanism. You can see the switch right here. This one switch unlocks or locks the cards, meaning you can just pull them out or put them back in. No screwdriver required. And before we close the case up, I just wanna point out that there are three large fans in the front, and you can kinda of see that they push air from the front through the MPX modules and then out the back. Combine that with all the open space in the case and it should result in a much cooler system. All right, so let's take a look at some of the specs. Our particular model is a 12 core Intel Xeon W processor running at 3.3 gigahertz. I'm very happy to see that there are more multi-core options available these days. And yeah, many more applications take advantage of them. Just so you know, you can get up to 28 cores in the Mac Pro if you've got that kind of coin. Now our model came with 48 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. That's customizable up to 768 gigabytes of DDR4. And if you do have the 24 or 28 core processor, you can get up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM. Is that enough? So the one area we did kind of splurge on is on the video card. In here we have the AMD Radeon Pro Vega 2, and that's got 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which is a very fast type of memory. Now this is a high-end graphics card. This is intended for creators, some workstation users, and of course the very fast HBM2 memory is great for programs that use it for compute, like DaVinci Resolve does. Now although Premiere Pro doesn't lean as much on the GPU as Resolve does, it does really like video memory. So the 32 gigabytes in sheer quantity helps a lot here. So we took one of our older Premiere Pro projects and just ran it on this computer to compare it to our older 2013 Mac Pros. We rendered out a UHD 4K H.264 file, which is typical for us. Now our older 2013 units, which are six core machines to be fair, rendered the video in 16 and a half minutes. Not terrible, but also not great. Now compared to the new 2019 Mac Pro, 
we were able to render it in 5 minutes 16 seconds. That's a dramatic decrease in time. If you consider that across many, many videos all the time, if you're a full-time editor, that's a lot of time that adds up. So that brings us to another concern. Anytime you really push the CPU, anytime the computer is running at full blast just to get that file done, you have to worry about cooling and thermal limiting, any kind of throttling that might go on. The 2013 Mac Pros were known to run on the hot side, and considering how small the unit is, it does kind of make sense. As we saw before, the new system has a lot more room to breathe, so let's take a look at some of the thermals for both the systems. So okay, we have the system idling here for a couple of minutes just to let things settle in. We have Mac fan controls open so we can see exactly what we're working with here. I believe the top one is the CPU fan and the three down here are the case fans. Now all of them here are running well below their maximum thresholds and we have here a very nice, very cool CPU temperature of only 31C. That's wonderful. Overall, everything else looks good too. 37 on the GPU. The SSD is running very cool, 25. It's looking good. So now obviously this is idle. What happens when we render a video? I've got Premiere open already. This is an older project, like I said. We're just going to export it. For the sake of consistency, we're just going to use a stock Premiere Pro preset, the Vimeo 4K preset. Now, just a small note, this does lean on hardware encoding, which we do not have in the other Macs. So this is also on its own a huge improvement. That's something you will not get in the older ones. But processing is still done on the CPU itself. So it's going, now you can see the ETA is already pretty low as it is. If we go back to our fan control, we can see that the fans are barely moving. Now the temperature of the CPU is climbing a bit. We have over here 47, 48, 52. From what we saw before, this really only peaked at about the mid 60s, 65, 66 was about the highest I saw and that was not consistent. It was consistently around 60, 62. So that's still a very, very cool temperature. To jump back into it real quickly, you can see this has sped up a bit. There's a very short ETA of two minutes, 45 seconds-ish. Again, this is hardware encoding. That means that it's using Intel's Quick Sync to encode, but the actual processing, most of the video rendering is still done on the CPU. So it's really just the encoding step. But this does still push the CPU. Now, even though Premiere does lean on GPUs a bit, it does not use it as heavily as, say, DaVinci Resolve. This is only going up a couple of degrees from the idle temperature, so really for this example, we're looking at CPU. All right, so we've got some red code footage. This is raw red footage open up in DaVinci Resolve, and I want to do a very simple color grade here. We're using only one node. Now, if I play this clip, we can see that it plays almost immediately at full speed. It very occasionally drops, but this is effectively full speed playback. This is running a lot on the GPU. DaVinci is great at leveraging GPUs. You can see it recognizes the Radeon Pro Vega 2 right here. We obviously have 48 gigs of memory, so we have plenty to work with. The 12 cores doesn't hurt either. So we have a very powerful system to work with. Just to see how smoothly it runs, we also have a secondary node here with a denoiser. Most of DaVinci's filters run on the GPUs as well, and you can see I've enabled the slower and thus better motion estimation type. There's three frames going here. This is a pretty light denoise, but it still plays back. And it plays back not quite real time, but very close. And it does occasionally, let's go back, let's go back. It does play nearly at real time, and so it's not a dramatic slowdown just to use this. A lot of times, especially with 5K footage, this really slows things down, so this is great that it works. So we're gonna export this really quick. I'm gonna add this to the queue, and we shall render this. So now let's take a look at the GPU, because that was the whole point. So now we can see that the GPU is climbing up. We're definitely higher than we were before. This is 52, 54. Looks like it is Staying around that area, 57, still very good. A lot of times with the older Mac, we would hit temperatures in excess of 80 degrees Celsius. So this is a huge improvement. 
So overall, the new Mac Pro is an extremely customizable, incredibly powerful machine. The expandability is great, and I really have to hand it to Apple for making this one of the most customizable and expandable Macs in years. I think professionals in video, photography, motion graphics, 3D rendering, things like that, anybody who uses a high-end workstation will really maximize this machine. The new CPU, GPU, and RAM options are a must-have for power users, and I'm very grateful that we finally have them. So that's it for the new 2019 Mac Pro. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that you're the first one to know when we put out a new video. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.